Hello everybody, it's Mike here at from Scratch and today we got a two for one. Basically two key pieces of software have been updated today, both from Serif, both called Affinity. One is called Affinity Photo and the second one is called Affinity Designer. Now I'll be honest, right up front, I don't know a whole lot about Affinity Photo. What I can tell you is my wife purchased this herself to replace her Photoshop uh, subscription so she no longer has Adobe Cloud and she has never looked back. So this has replaced Photoshop and Lightroom for her for her own photo work. Myself, I use Affinity Designer every single day. And I will simply put it this way, it is in my top five favorite pieces of software, period. I love using it and I highly recommend it. Now, both of these are commercial software and we're talking about them today because 1.7 was just released. Now, this is a free upgrade to anybody that already has version one, such as myself. Um, and it's also on sale for 20% off for both versions. So Affinity Photo, you could think of as an alternative for, as I mentioned earlier on, Photoshop or in the also open source world, it's more like... Um, GIMP or paint.net than it is like Painter or um, Krita. Like it's more in that photo manipulation side of things, but you can use it for uh, texture touch-ups. Uh, you've got real-time filters and so on in photo. And then we've got Designer, which is uh, more like Adobe Illustrator. The closest uh, alternative you'd find in the open source world is Inkscape. And I'm actually gonna show you Inkscape and designer on the same file in a few minutes. And you can get an idea of why I use designer on a daily basis. Now, as I mentioned, both of these are commercial software, but both are very reasonably priced. Now, what you can see here, it's available on Mac, Windows, and iPad. And the iPad version is fully functional. I will actually quite often do work at night on the um, on designs, basically using my iPad and then finish them off using desktop. 100% compatible interchange between them. And that is true of both Affinity Designer and Affinity Photo. And what you can see from these pricing, that's $55 Canadian, one and done. It's none of the subscription BS. You buy Affinity, you own Affinity. Uh, it's one of those versions things. So I imagine when 3.x comes out, you're gonna have to do an upgrade of some kind. And I also believe they do um, terms there. Now they also have free trials of everything available here. I believe they're one month in duration, but you do have to register with an email address to try either one out. Uh, they don't litter or anything on your computer, so if you want to check them out, from what I've seen, there's no consequence to trying these trials. Now, these are both been updated, so 1.7 was released for both of these versions. So we'll get to what is new in each of them. I'm going to give you a quick preview of both programs. Now, I'm not going to go hands-on with either. First off, because I'm going to come back at a later date and show you uh, photo, um, Affinity Designer in action, because this, again, is one of my favorite programs out there. And photo, it's just not something I use that much. I, I use a combination of it and paint.net for like image manipulation simply because I'm already familiar with paint.net. But now that I have licenses for both, I will probably start using uh, Affinity Photo a little bit more. You've got all your standard things. You've got your clone brush, your, your um, magnifying tools. You've got... Um, uh, lattice-based deforms. You've got all of these different things here. You've also got a lot of real-time uh, filters. So you come in here and you can do things like add a Gaussian blur and you will see you can get real-time previews of what's going on. Uh, it's all layered based. Uh, it's completely non-destructive so you can undo everything you are working on. You've got multiple different color profiles you can work from. Uh, the nice thing that you will notice here is the performance is very, very good. Uh, so you can navigate around quite simply and cleanly in the interface. Uh, you've got ordering things here. You've got uh, snapping tools going on here. And another cool thing that they do is personas where you can basically switch between different modes. So if I go into the liquify persona, for example, I can then come in and we can kind of do a freeform deformation using a liquid setup. So if you want to get that kind of special effect and then you can either apply it or undo it and there's your end result. You'll see you've got multiple different uh, formats or personas here. You've got the develop persona and the tools will change as a result and you can cancel out. You've also got a, a tone mapping and export persona. Uh, speaking of export, you do have that option there. So you export out and you have plenty of different options. This also, as of 1.7, matches Krita's announcement a couple days ago. It now supports HDR painting as well, but we'll see that more in just a second when we get into the, um, the release notes for the 1.7 release. So that is uh, Affinity Photo. Now this here, uh, oh, that's TextMint, okay. This here is Affinity Designer. As you can see, I used it for the uh, cover image for this video itself. I use it for all of the cover images here. This one is a vector-based application, very similar to um, Adobe Illustrator or somewhat lesser degree Flash or Inkscape. And it also has a number of special effects. It handles text flawlessly. This is one of those areas where I struggle with other applications, but I do not with Affinity Designer. The text tools are very, very intuitive. 
Now, once again, it follows that um, photo mode. So you've got all your design tools here for, for drawing your vector-based graphics, but you can also switch over here uh, to a pixel-based uh, persona where you're working, again, with pixels. You can do things like fills and paints and, and so on with different layers. And then we've also got um, export persona available here for when you're done with your project. Everything is layer based. You've got your modifiers for any individual layer. Very easy to work with and you're seeing real time previews as you go through them. You'll also find over here you've got special effects. Adding special effects to things is brutally simple. So if you want to do a color outline, for example, there and it's added in toggle that off. Everything again has a real time preview. You've also got uh, predefined styles that you can work with, uh, text styles that you can work with or have predefined there as well. As I mentioned earlier on, the text tools are very, very, very uh, powerful easy to work with. You've also got an artistic text tool. You can uh, move this guy around, no problems after the fact. Uh, we can easily switch out between fonts and see previews of the fonts as we go. As you see here, uh, you've got tools for deforming and changing or drawing along curves or all of your special effects applied to your text layers as well. Uh, it's just a powerful tool. It's one of those ones, again, I'm going to come back to it at some point in the future and give you a bit of a better hands-on. But first off, what you might be asking yourself is, why don't you just use Inkscape? It's free and open source. It fits in the theme of your channel. Why did you spend $60 on this and not just use Inkscape? And here, I'll demonstrate that to you. Here is an SVG file. That's, it's somewhat complex, about a half a megabyte in size. As you can see, it is built up with a number of layers, built of groups. There's a lot of curves going on here. And here I am navigating. Let's say I want to zoom in, do a little bit of work. I hold down control, zoom in, zoom out, zoom back in. Like so if I want to grab a layer like this, I can. And there is my performance as I move that shading layer around. So here I could grab another layer and move that guy around. So you see the performance is good. And I can do these things really as fast as I want. I don't really have any issues. My performance for zooming in is excellent. It never slows down. Uh, I can apply special effects on any one of these guys. So say if I want to make this guy give a 3D effect and a bevel effect on it, there you go. So you see my performance here is very good. Applying effects is super simple. It's a very straightforward process. Now here I am, I'm gonna go over to Inkscape, exact same file, an SVG file that was imported. And now I'm gonna zoom in. By the way, I zoomed in. Oh. Oh, oh, I, I think it's going to come back. It, it's going to update eventually. I, I, oh, there we go. So we zoomed in. That is not usable. Let's pan around. I did, by the way. I let go of the mouse. So we should be moving now. Oh, there we go. So again, affinity. You just get, we're talking two programs in two completely different leagues. Now that version of Inkscape I showed you is 1.98 or something like that. It's the most verse, recent version that you can download on their website. And with Inkscape 1.0, the performance is definitely improving, but it's improved to the point where it's about 5% of what Affinity Designer is. The same thing is when you start looking at applying special effects between the two programs, it's night and day. It's a thousand times easier to use Affinity. So this is why this is a daily weapon in my arsenal. I, I highly recommend it. At that $50 pay one and done price, it, it's a no brainer to me, as, but I also have the money available to me. If you don't have any money at all, it's great to have options out there like Inkscape. And I hope Inkscape gets better and better and better. But this is like, it's just, perfectly straddles the middle ground between Adobe Illustrator, which I've always found exceedingly complex to use, and uh, Inkscape, which I always found exceedingly frustrating to use. Uh, Affinity Designer just kind of fits in that middle ground and does it excellently. So I have nothing negative to say about this application for the most part. Now we're gonna back here to the actual news release here. So first off, we have the 1.7 release. This is Affinity Photo, and here's what is new in this particular release. So we've got big performance increase across Mac, Windows, and iPad, pen and dial support for Surface devices, HDR and EDR monitor support, at least two times faster loading of raw files, more efficient, a more effective noise reduction, hot pixel removal, and wide color space development, new sub brushes to combine multiple brushes in a single stroke. Symmetry is now supported, including on canvas controls and optional mirror. On the fly nozzle rotation now available with shortcut keys, new procedural texture and Veroni filter effects. Live filter effects have been rewritten to improve performance. And again, performance, performance, performance. I love that about these tools. Uh, all new HSL adjustment layer has been added supporting hue, um, custom hue ranges, new UI and picker controls, uh, layer studio revamp, uh, alternative future for document history, HEIF images can now be loaded, including uh, loading of any depth map, uh, 
added support for 12-bit and 16-bit CMYK TIFF files, new asset panel available to store and drag and drop regularly used assets, and huge macro and batch processing improvements. And then when we get into the Affinity Designer, we've got big improvements again, dial support, HDR monitor support, create and edit directly in isometric plane, arrowheads, new um, transform mode in node tool, lasso selection of nodes, new sculpt mode added to pencil, um, added unlimited strokes and fills to a single shape, new point transform tool, many grid improvements, including a new cube grid and column guides, uh, many PSD export improvements, layer studio revamp, uh, Pixel Persona now supports sub brushes with symmetry up to 32 ways and alternative futures for document history. Speaking of which, these programs all have a complete non-destructive history. So if you want to go back in time at any particular point in time, there is a full history that you can uh, revert back. So you see here, we can go back in time on the stack no problem at all. Uh, that is also true on the two mobile platforms. So if you get photo or designer for iPad, uh, they work pretty much just the same. It's just their UIs are optimized for mobile work. Uh, again, these are two programs that I really can't recommend more, especially in a world where a lot of people are adverse to subscriptions. Uh, these are both subscription free one and done purchases and that is a dying breed and it's something that we should definitely support. So right now, you know what, if you're getting your stuff done with uh, free tools or your existing tools and this doesn't do anything for you, very well. But if you're kind of frustrated with, you know, maybe the performance of the tools you're using or the price or the cost of the tools you're using, I find both Affinity products, especially Designer, just hit that middle ground perfectly. And like I've been gushing all along, I can't recommend it more. It's just such a great program. And no, this is not paid. Um, this is just literally, like I said, this is one of my top five favorite programs. So I'm going to gush about it. Anyways, let me know, are you already using Affinity, either Photo or Designer? And if so, what are your opinions down below? If not, is there anything here you specifically want to know about? Do you want to see a more hands-on review with either product? Let me know all these things. Comments down below, and I will talk to you all later. Goodbye.